Hey guys, I just want to take a few minutes and do an unboxing video on a Hummingbird Solix 15. Uh, this uh, unit features Chirp, uh, Mega Side Imaging Plus, Mega Down Imaging Plus, uh, and this is a Generation 2 unit. Um, but regardless of which gen you're buying, the unboxing is going to be the same. What you're going to see is going to be the same as the unit you buy. Uh, and it's pretty much the same for the Helix units as well. So let's jump into this right, right away. Get that tape cut. Set that out of the way. The first thing I suggest is when you open the box, have it oriented like this. Let's go ahead and get it open. And here's why I want you to do that. If you take a look inside the box, you'll see you've got the head unit here with some heavy duty packing and you have this box here, okay? You want this box in the up position. So we're gonna rotate this box to its side. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out that upper box. And the reason we're doing that is because our accessories in here to put the unit together are open. If you open this up the other way and you pull that out, you're probably gonna dump this all over the table or the boat or whatever, okay? So let's get our unit out, slide that out. One of our packing ends came off. They come with two of these and that shoved on there, but I pulled it off. So that's fine. Let's get this out of here. These are pretty heavy duty, you know, really protects the unit during shipping. Comes with a heavy plastic bag on top of the unit. Um, let's get it out of that bag. Okay. So couple things um, you're gonna find more wrap on this um, that's meant to protect the unit until you get it put in installed in the boat uh, I'd recommend you leave this on until the very last minute when you have to take it off um, but let's look at the front first one of the things I really like about these units is this heavy-duty cover that comes with the unit um, you know they fit on here they're not gonna come off when they're in place this is just some heavy duty protection for that unit. Um, again, like I said, protective films. Um, I actually had a guy <laughs> called me up, went on the water and he said, something's wrong with my screen. It looks all bubbly. And I said, did you take the film off of it? And, and of course he didn't. He didn't realize the film was on there, but there is a protective film on there. Okay, you can see that right there. Again, I would suggest you leave that on until you absolutely have to take it off. Just, you know, during installation, we have hand tools and you might damage or scratch your screen. Um, you'd be unhappy with that. But that said, these screens are very durable. You know, I run charters and I've got uh, folks on my boat all the time and they're touching and feeling and, uh, you know, they're wearing rings and stuff and I have no scratches. That said, one of the things that you'll love about Hummingbird screens is the ability to see with such clarity even in the sunshine. Uh, I, I just think uh, the contrast on these screens is unbelievable. And we'll get into that a little bit more on the boat. We'll talk about some of that stuff. Um, the Solix unit, different from the Helix unit, you can control the unit from the keypad or touch screen gesture similar to uh, iOS. Um, if you want, you can uh, turn off the touchscreen ability and just control the unit here with the buttons. Uh, where I see applications like that occur is when you're fishing really rough water and you know it's easier to brace yourself on the unit, do what you need to on the buttons rather than if the boat's jostling around trying to make a gesture on the screen. So there's advantages and disadvantages to everything, but it, at least you have the choice to do what you want. Down here on the bottom right is your dual SD card slots. Um, nice waterproof connector or cover that seals that up. Um, I have another one of these units on my river sled uh, and it, it's exposed to the weather all the time. No problem with the rain. Um, it, it, it just functions flawlessly. Let's take a look at the back here, at your connections. 
This is your sonar temp. This is where you're gonna run your transducer to. Uh, you've got your ethernet cable here, and I'm gonna expand on that ethernet cable here in just a second. Uh, you've got your NEMA 0183, you've got NEMA 2000, and then of course you've got your power uh, speed temp right here. So let me, let's touch on this first. Um, these units do not come with an external GPS antenna. Do you need one? Maybe not. It really depends on where your unit is mounted, okay? Um, I run a 30-foot Grady White. I have uh, windshields on three sides, and I have a hard fiberglass top that sits upon a tower. And my units are on the inside of that. I ran that for quite some time, uh, and I did not have an external antenna. The GPS inside these units uh, picked up the satellites just fine, okay? Uh, so get the unit installed and then determine whether or not you think you need an antenna. Uh, if you do, uh, it's most likely gonna be in a situation where you have an enclosed cabin and you know maybe an aluminum boat or something and you just need that, that extra power, right? Uh, but other than that, GPS comes in the head unit itself. Uh, same goes for the Helix models with GPS feature. Okay, so that covers the Solix unit. Now let's get to the number one question I get when I'm at the stores doing appearances like at Cabell Cabela's and Bass Pro, and that is, do the units come with a transducer? And the answer is yes. Um, they come with a transom mount transducer, okay? Uh, you get 25 feet of cable here. It's possible that in your installation, you need an extension. That's something that you can buy from Humminbird. Uh, if you have difficulty in finding the correct extension for your transducer, just give them a call. Their customer service is phenomenal. Um, just to next to the transducer is the transducer installation kit. Um, completely adjustable. Uh, very simple to install. The first time I put a brand new system in my boat, um, I think my installation time was about 20 minutes, okay? It just is very simple to install. Um, in this bag, we've got our power. Let's get that out. So here's your power cable. Uh, it's about six feet long, uh, five or six feet long. Um, you can't mix these plugs up because only this will only fit in one of them. But I do want to talk to you about power for a second. So the wiring in your boat, I don't believe is sufficient to run these effectively. The wire's just not big enough and you've got other switches and other things going on on that. Um, I see a lot of comments on like Facebook pages and groups and in forums where somebody says, I installed this unit and it's giving me low voltage warning. Well, if it's not getting the correct voltage to the unit, you're going to get the low voltage warning. And I can tell you that 99% of the time, it's because of the size of wire you're tying this into. So what I did is I ran 10.2 from this back to my battery switches. Uh, and from the battery switch, it goes to the battery, right? It's on its own circuit. I don't have any other interference. That way, the power I'm getting to my electronics is just the power for the electronics. I put my inline fuse back by the battery switch. So if I have a fuse issue, I know where to find it, right? Don't bury it inside your console or something. Um, if you open your instructions, this is your packet for all your instructions, okay? It's got a template in there, but it tells you what gauge cable or wire you should be running depending upon how far you're running, right? So I have a 30 foot boat and I have to snake it through some odd areas and so I end up with a longer length and so that's why I'm running 10-2, okay? Uh, I've got a buddy, uh, he runs a shorter length, he runs 12.2, right? Okay. So also in the bag with the power, 
is the gimbal screw kits. Let's just get that out of here. So here are your gimbal nuts, okay? And in this bag, you've got some washers and some rubber washers. That's to help create the tension when you put the gimbal, the unit onto the gimbal, okay? So here's our gimbal, okay? Great thing about this, can be mounted on the surface, you can mount it on an overhead, you can mount it on a wall, right? For me, uh, I ended up having to get a ram mount, uh, but I had the unit mounted on this and then this mounted to my ram mount. Uh, that's what worked for me. Uh, Ram's got some great products with uh, various configurations which allow you to put a unit almost in any location. So that's something that you may need to consider. So, I mean, that's it. That's everything that's in the box. Um, let's touch on a few things so that you feel more informed going out if you're going to be upgrading or if this is your first time getting electronics. And that is this. This unit comes with side imaging. And if you're gonna run the unit and you want side imaging, which I strongly recommend for many, many fishing applications, um, you're gonna want to buy a second transom mount transducer. And here's why. Many times when we are fishing, we'll leave those lower units in the water, whether it's a single or a twin screw like I have. Now, if you don't have anything on your transom and it's completely wide open, this doesn't apply to you. So I'm specifically talking to you folks that are running outboards, whether it's a single, twin, triples, whatever. Um, a lot of times we leave those outboards down so it gives us more steering control, especially in trolling applications. If you want to get side imaging on both sides of the boat, you need a second unit and you also need to buy a splitter cable. Both of these ends will come up to the unit and the splitter cables, yay so long, and you'll plug both into that and then plug it into here and configure which side is port, which side is starboard, right? The reason you need to do that is because the motor's in the way and side imaging can't shoot through the other side, right? Now, if you're like I am, I run a through-hole transducer. I don't need to worry about that because I have no obstructions. And if you're running a through-hole transducer, uh, side imaging won't be an issue. In fact, if you prefer to run a through-hole transducer, you can buy one at hummingbird.com or possibly your local vendor if they have it in stock. Uh, again, if you have trouble figuring out which one is the correct one for your unit, just make sure you have your model, uh, make and model, your serial number, call customer service, they'll point in the right direction. Um, now, I'll just touch on the through-hole transducer real quick. They are a similar plastic transducer, it's not bronze. Uh, I've been running these for four years. I have never had a problem. And I fish in Puget Sound where there's all sorts of junk in the water, trees and all sorts of stuff. Uh, I haven't cracked one, broken one, hasn't given me an issue, uh, but that is an option if you want to go with a through-hole transducer. Um, your local vendor should have some more information about that if you want to get that. So I think that about wraps it up. Um, that's everything that's in the box. Again, depending on your boat, installation is going to take anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour. Uh, it shouldn't take any longer than that. I should touch on this. If you're gonna have, if you're gonna strive for a one boat system, okay, and what am I talking about there? I'm talking about GPS, or I'm sorry, fish finder, trolling motor, downriggers, one boat system. Everything's operated from one head unit. It's quite possible you're gonna need a five port ethernet hub. And why is that? Well, you've only got one network port on the back of your head unit, okay? So let's say you add a trolling motor and then you have a second unit or you have radar. Once you go beyond more than one add-on, you need a five port hub. Uh, small unit, get that thing wired in. Again, I'd go clean power on your, on your ethernet hub back to uh, the battery switch, but then you can connect your trolling motor into the hub. You can connect your radar into the hub. You can connect your second unit or third unit into the hub, and then it all goes to the main unit. 
then the main unit, whatever its features are, can share all of those features with your other head units if you have them. So in my boat, I'm running uh, this unit here, a 15 inch uh, side imaging uh, with chirp and down imaging and everything. Now my 12 inch unit, I primarily use it for radar. But every now and again, when I don't need radar, I'll put maybe side imaging up on my 12 inch unit. And the 12 inch unit that I purchased was only a 12 inch mega down imaging plus. Didn't come with side imaging, but because this unit can side image, I'm able to get side imaging images on my 12 inch unit. So whatever your main unit is, that's the one that you want the most features so that when you share that information with the other unit, you can see that information, okay? So hopefully that helps you guys out. You saw it unbox, saw how simple it is. It's easy to install. I'll have some more videos coming out on the water. We'll talk about uh, some different features and just stuff that'll, that'll help you. Things that I use every day and maybe you haven't seen it and it'll help you guys out. So for more information about Humminbird and their products, visit humminbird.com. And if you're interested in fishing with me, go to 365charters.com or ridge2riveroutdoors.com. Thanks for watching.